the ocular hypertension treatment study the goals was to evaluate the safety and the efficacy of topical medications in delaying or preventing the development of primary open angle glaucoma also to identify risk factors so we can tell which patient is likely to develop glaucoma this is the number of eyes included the age was between 40 to 80 with normal field normal disc and the IOP should be between 24 to 32 in the qualified eye and between 21 to 32 in the fellow eye exclusion criteria as you can see diabetic retinopathy is one of the exclusion criteria patients were randomized into two groups the first received no treatment the second received topical treatment to lower the IOP by 20% so that the IOP should be less than 24 millimeters of mercury adjunctive therapy can be added if target IOP is not met patient was patients were monitored every six months with field and every one year with disc photography if there is field changes found on three successive examinations or disc changes found on two successive examinations and these changes were attributed to glaucoma then the outcome is there and this is the end point of the study in that period this is the IOP over the follow-up period in the observation group and in the treated group now patients diagnosed to have glaucoma 55 percent of them the diagnosis was through optic disc changes while 35 percent the diagnosis was through field changes and in 10 percent both the field and the disc showed the defect so the importance of this remark is to keep an eye on the optic disc optic disc changes can be very early and we can detect it before field changes to diagnose glaucoma as you can see here the number of patients that develop glaucoma in the medical and in the no treatment groups at five years people were treated about 4.4 of them developed glaucoma and in the observation group 9.5 percent developed glaucoma at 84 months the ratio still widened and the treated group 4.5 de percent developed glaucoma in the medical treated group and around 11 in the percent in the observation group developed glaucoma so what does it mean it means that if we give some treatment we can prevent the appearance of glaucoma in 6.4% so if we treat 100 persons we can save 6.4 persons if we divide each of these numbers by 6.4 so this will be 1 and this will be around 15.4 this means if you treat around 16 patients you can prevent the appearance of glaucoma in one person this is known as the number needed to treat the number needed to treat is the number of subjects need to treat in order to prevent one adverse outcome in one patient during the follow-up cataract appeared in 6.4 percent in the treatment arm and in 4.3 percent in the no treatment arm so what does it mean With application of treatment, 
cataract appeared in 2.1 percent so if we treat 100 person cataract is induced in 2.1 percent if we divide each <coughs> side by 2.1 so about 48 persons needed to be treated so cataract can develop in one person this is known as the number needed to harm the number needed to harm is the number of subjects that you need to treat to induce a harmful outcome in one patient now to identify the risk factors which patient is likely to develop primary open angle glaucoma two types of analysis were done the first is the univariant and the second is the multivariant analysis in the univariant analysis risk factors for developing glaucoma were old age african americans male large horizontal and vertical cup disc ratio higher iop greater Humphrey visual field pattern standard def deviation and heart diseases and thinner central corneal measurement all these factors are also found with the multivariant except these three ones the African Americans the male and the heart disease are only found with the univariant analysis this is the multivariant analysis and as you can see here the risk factors include age IOP central corneal thickness pattern standard deviation horizontal cup disc ratio high vertical cup disc ratio high as you can see here diabetes is not a risk factor but this could be probably because the exclusion criteria of the patients included to exclude patients with no diabetes with no diabetic retinopathy among all these factors the central corneal thickness was the highest risk factor actually the ocular hypertension study pointed out the importance of the central corneal thickness the central corneal thickness of the patients were divided into three patients were divided into three main groups the middle group is where thickness of the central corneal thickness between 555 to 588 this is the middle group thinner corneas less than 555 thicker corneas higher than 588 on this side you get the central corneal thickness and on the other limb you have the baseline IOP as you can see here thinner corneas all in all have a higher incidence of development of glaucoma again if the cornea is thin and the IOP is high then the risk is more you can see in the first column the IOP is less than 23.75 and in the last column the IOP is more than 25.75 and this is in the middle so if you have a thin cornea and a high IOP then the risk is higher again this is the comparison between the corneal thickness and the vertical cup disc ratio as you can see again with thin corneas the risk is higher and with the larger vertical cup disc ratio the incidence is higher recently the risk factors were included in a module where we can enter these risk factors then an outcome with the probability of development of glaucoma in five years if you visited the Denver Eye Institute site you can enter the different risk factors 
like the age, the IOP, diabetes, pattern standard deviation, corneal thickness, the vertical cup disc ratio. Then you go for the calculation. As you can see here, the risk to develop glaucoma without treatment is 55%, with treatment is 33%. Then you can choose to treat or not to treat your patient. This is the address site for that module. So this study shows that with high risk profile, treatment without waiting for evidence of progression seems to be acceptable, while waiting for evidence of progression is reasonable as long as a good monitoring and a callback system is in place to avoid loss to, to follow up. Before the decision to treat is taken, it is important to measure the central corneal thickness to evaluate the risk of conversion. We have to keep in mind in this study, many persons with ocular hypertension measured with aplanation tonometry do not have it because of the thick cornea and should not be treated. In the ocular hypertension study, one quarter of the candidates had corneal thickness higher than 600 microns. Now we can go to the next part of the presentation.